Hello everybody, welcome to the session of the SAP online track event. My name is Douglas Cesar Kuschler and I work as an SAP software developer using NABAP, SAP UI5 and the SAP Cloud Platform. For more than 10 years, I worked on SAP projects for companies from Brazil, from the United States, from England and from Germany. Nowadays, I am also part of the SAP Champions program and I, since 2016, I collaborate with the SAP community by sharing knowledge and helping people to learn and to connect with others. We are now in the middle of a pandemic that forces everybody that can work from home to do it. It is a very challenging situation for many, but we are now learning that work is something we do and not a place we are required to go. I have been doing remote work most of the time since 2015 and I had learned lots of things from this experience and I want to share some useful knowledge in this session. I have worked remotely as a team member and also as a team leader, being responsible for selecting and managing other remote SAP software developers. I think this experience gave me a clear picture of what working remotely is and what is required to successfully manage remote teams. I want to start saying that some jobs and tasks are compatible with remote work while others are not. This presentation will focus on those jobs that can be performed remotely. There are many more jobs than we think that can be performed remotely, including some jobs that are related to creativity and collaboration. We will talk about them later in this presentation. Anyone who worked for a large corporation had probably already done a remote work. Remote work means working in the same team or in the same project or in the same task with people who are located in another place. It means that our co-workers can be working from another building, another city, or even from another country. By working this way, we have to learn how to collaborate, communicate, and make things happen, even if we are not close to each other. So, what's the difference now? At first, now it's much more common for people at home to have access to powerful computer technology, high-speed internet, and real-time video conference software. It's now, it's not something reserved to those who work at big companies anymore. All this technology can be available at home for most people who work from an office. If we look closely, most of the work that's performed in offices today can now be done from anywhere. It means work can be location independent and soaking people, as we are seeing during this pandemic. It also means that companies can get real value from their people without requiring them to go to the office. Now, we all have been suddenly forced to work from home without any preparation. Many people are now working from home with children who cannot go to school and are trying to get lots of their parents' time and attention. Also, most of us were not trained on how to work remotely, meaning that many people have not received any training about remote work at all. Many of us did not have all the tools ready for working remotely, because these tools were not needed before. Another thing is that, unfortunately, lots of people don't have a workspace at home with enough privacy and silence. 
Many people will also not be prepared with a structure as comfortable as we have when working from our office desks with comfortable chairs and big computer screens. In such condi conditions, working from home can be hard, can be stressful, and it can affect our individual productivity in a negative way. We all must keep in mind that at this moment we need a lot of empathy to understand people who might be in a challenging environment at home. Remote work will not be at best for some people at this moment because of these challenges. Maybe many of us have noted that some comforts from our offices are missing when we work from home. It is something we must think about and invest some time and money to get fixed if we can. We need an environment at home that's good enough so we can be productive. Some people will be lucky to have money made available by their companies to make it happen. There are things we can do with little money and some reorganization at our homes that will have a huge impact on our productivity. The first and the most important thing is to check if you can have a room where you can close the door. This is important because this is the best way to achieve true concentration when working. If you cannot have a room with closed doors, consider getting an earphone with active noise cancelling technology. The next important step should be choosing a new separate desk that will be exclusive for work. Do it even if you do not have a separate room. If you can have a room as a dedicated home office, do it. Otherwise, you can try to make space for a work desk on your bedroom. To be able to close the door is important if you want to concentrate on your work and if you want to provide the best experience to your team when joining virtual meetings. In my case, I had to do some reorganization in my bedroom to make space for a work desk. It was the best thing I have done for my productivity. Finally, if you can, get an external keyboard, mouse, and a big computer screen. I would say at least 27 inches if you have space. And if you have additional space in the budget, buy two screens because it will be useful when you join online meetings. If you have two screens, you can use one to work on shared documents with your team, while the other screen will be used to see the people you are working with. If you can use at least some of these ideas, you, you will have a much more comfortable and productive experience when working from home. It will be, in many ways, very similar to the experience you have when working from the office. Now, I want to share that there are lots of reasons for believing that this time remote work is here to stay. Here we can see the names of companies that already announced the plans to have at least part of their employees working remotely for an extended period of time. Some of these companies are planning to make remote work possible for their teams until the end of the year. Twitter announced that from now, all their employees can choose to work from home or, for, or from any other place they want forever. I have also done some research and found many non-tech companies, big and small, in places like United States, Brazil, and Europe that are taking similar steps. Even some governments are starting to support these ideas. 
There are politicians in Germany and in England that have announced they want to take steps to make remote work something every company must offer to employees who work in positions that are compatible with remote work. While this can be surely open to debate, it shows that this trend is here to stay. Now, remote work has some problems, of course. The problems are just different from the ones we have when working from traditional offices. One of the most common problems with remote work is that sometimes we can feel alone. When we move from seeing people every day to working alone for extended periods of time, we can start missing the office conversations. We do need human contact. As always, it's about creating a balance and an organizational culture that supports this. But this is a problem that can and must be addressed. So, when working remotely, we can easily feel alone, but we can take some actions to change it. Now that most of us are still required to stay at home because of the pandemic, we can use the same tools we are using for work to get new social experiences. Some teams are having virtual coffee hours where people can chat with others who they usually are not directly working with. One good idea can be making two 15 minutes virtual coffee hours every day, where anyone from your company can join a video meeting and chat with others. There are also many people that are using video conferences to promote happy hours where they bring their own drinks and have relaxed conversations for two or three hours. Some groups are doing it once or twice a month so they can chat with friends as we can see the guys in this photo. It is not the same as meetings in person but we can still have a lot of fun. I strongly suggest you try it with your team members or friends. Finally, once the pandemic is over and we can leave our homes, some of us will keep working remotely. So feeling alone can still be a problem. When that time comes, we must start looking for more opportunities to meet people outside work. The SAP community has lots of events all over the world, where a lot of people get together, as we can see in these photos, from different SAP Inside Track events. Events like these can be great opportunities to spend a day together with like-minded people and make new friends who also work with SAP technologies. Now, getting back to work, some people think creative work will suffer when you are working remotely. But I believe there are things that can be done to enable and even to increase creativity in this situation. First, we must remember that creativity usually does not choose a place or time to happen. Digital tools let us easily capture and share any creative ideas we have with anyone, so distance is not a problem. We can also easily start a video call anytime, anywhere, with anyone and collaborate on our creative new ideas. That is a new kind of application that can be used for online brainstorming using a virtual whiteboard that can be shared by a team in the same way we do when we are together in the office. In this slide, I show two examples of this kind of application, Mural and Miro. These tools are powerful 
They offer templates and integrations that make remote creative work possible. Another good idea is to schedule regular virtual meetings between people from different departments or business areas so they can remotely exchange ideas about problems that need to be solved and get input from people they usually do not work with. My conclusion is that many times creative solutions arise from cross-collaboration and now we know that digital tools can make it easier to happen from a distance too. Let's talk about why good management is the most important thing for remote work to be successful. We know that team members have a lot to learn if they want to be productive when working remotely. We also know there are lots of tools to help people to collaborate and be highly productive when working remotely. But if leaders are not prepared with the right and the specific knowledge required for managing remote teams, remote work will not work. I think managers are the most important people for the success of remote work. They must be enabled and motivated to get all the training on the methods and tools that makes highly efficient remote work possible. First, we must recognize that managing the work of remote teams is much different from managing the work of people in the office. If we try managing remote teams using the same approach we use to manage teams in the office, it will not work. People will get stressed and the results are not going to happen. When working from the office, there are managers who check if working is being done by looking to their teams while they are working. Also, some managers like to talk to their teams a couple of times per day to check if work is getting done. Now, if we try to use the same management approach with a remote team, it will not work. But if, if we do small changes to our management style, we can get the same or even better results than what we get when working in the office. Also, if we use the right management approach, remote teams will keep enjoying work instead of thinking about leaving their jobs. The reality is that many managers never received any training on how to manage remote teams. Even the best managers can benefit from learning new skills that are crucial for getting results when teams are working remotely. So we know that it's hard to watch people working remotely like we can do when working in the office. And even if we try to do it, we can go without intention into micromanagement and sometimes even into privacy issues. In my opinion, this is not the way to go. So what should we do instead? We are going to take a look at it now. When it comes to managing remote work, sometimes we must adapt our leadership style to be compatible with this new way of working. When we are working in traditional offices, some managers can choose to control the inputs of work. The inputs are how, where, and when team members do their work. But when working remotely, the most and maybe only effective way to manage is by controlling the outputs of work. And it means controlling the results of work. Now, I want to call your attention for a management approach or goal setting tool called OKR, which means Objectives and Key Results. The main benefit of using OKR as a remote management approach is that it provides a clear language for constantly sharing what everybody is working on. 
With OKRs, we can track how things are making progress, no matter when or where people are working from. There are some great tools to support leaders who want to implement OKRs, and in this slide, I am sharing three excellent books about it. One study published by MIT Sloan says that remote teams can perform better than teams working together in an office. This study says that management must be done in a very specific way to be successful. The conclusion is that we must understand and accept that managing remote teams is different and that it is it is worth the effort if we need some extra training to learn how to do it in the most efficient way. Here I'm sharing some ideas from highly respected management publications to show that remote work is being taken seriously even by high-level high executives. This slide contains some interesting resources you can read later. You can download my presentation and reach out if you need more interesting ideas about remote work. I want to finish my presentation by saying that I believe this is the year remote work is being finally accepted by many more people and organizations that didn't believe it could work. There are already many leaders and organizations declaring they have decided to use remote work for the long term, even after the current pandemic situation is over. Now we are learning that this way of doing things can be very productive for many people and for many jobs. On the other hand, there are situations where we are still going to choose to get together and have work done. There are reasons people will still want to go to offices, but I believe that from now, offices will become an optional tool and not something mandatory anymore. We will choose to go to offices because we want to socialize or because we want to do some work together and not because we are required to do it to, do it, to get work done or to keep our jobs. We are finally seeing that work is something we do and not a place we are required to go. Thank you very much for your time and I hope I have shared some new knowledge that is useful for you and your team. See you.